Hey, you're watching Impossible Color, and this is another video in the before and after series. I'm in Camera Raw, and I'm looking at the straight out of camera image. I'm shooting in raw format, which I highly recommend if you're shooting in JPEG right now, you really need to make the transition over so that you can get the full use of your image. So this is the after that I did in Camera Raw. And you can see that it was brightened up quite a bit. There's some more saturation. And just a, a better balance of the tones and a full tonal range. It's looking a little bit flat in the before. So you can see the shadows were brought up. You can see more texture in the hair there. The whites were brought up just to help the figure come closer to the foreground. Uh, the blacks were kept down, even though the shadows went up, to make sure that the, the contrast remained. Did some white balance adjustments. So it was shot like this. Usually I try to adjust it manually and then I compare to a few of the presets and sometimes I might average out between them or reevaluate. Got a slight hue adjustment. I just brought the reds a little bit more to the pinkier side. I think that complements the lips and the cheeks a little bit better on the model. And also increased the saturation of that so they weren't so washed out. So let's open this up in Photoshop. And I got a folder here that includes all of the changes that I did. So you can see that I made a lot of stylistic choices here that changes the mood of the image quite a bit. I, I think it puts it in a more dreamy setting and my my goal was to consolidate the colors and make it a more cohesive image so let's go through each step by step and kind of see how it builds up over time looks like a lot of layers but it, uh, it won't take that long to go through so my first layer is preliminary touch-ups and chromatic aberration You can see this kind of cyan greenish outline that's happening everywhere. That's the chromatic aberration. That is a, an issue with the lens that is not always easy to avoid. So I remove that by sampling colors along here and using the color blending mode, painting all along there to hide that. And you'll also see there's some basic touch-ups. Uh, they've got some hair, stray hairs that are going right through to the lips here. It's a bit distracting. A little bit of a tension showing in the forehead here, so getting rid of that line. Some kind of a little scar there on the hand was removed. Pretty basic stuff to start things off. Then I did more refined pass on the skin. So let's open that up and the technique that I highly recommend for skin is frequency separation. So basically what that means is you're going to separate your image into a low frequency that contains information that is your base colors and not a lot of details. And you separate that from the high details and you work on these individually to suit different needs. And when you combine the two together, you should end up with nice, smooth, natural looking skin that doesn't look like it's been blurred out. Some of my more detailed videos, uh, you can see how I do my frequency separation. So let's turn that skin on and off. Looking much better. You can see that this little bit of squinting was causing uh, the muscle in the forehead to show up a little bit too strong there so that removes that i'm going to do a little bit of eyebrow fill in there as well just to even that out because some areas are lit some are dark and it doesn't look very full 
And then the first pass of a color balance. So at this point, I, I could have stopped with the look of the colors. I think it, it looks very well balanced. The slightly cooler, slightly purpley tones of the hair complementing with the greens of the grass is also repeated in the bouquet of flowers here and it creates a nice relationship but it's not quite what I was going for here after playing around with selective color I was basically able to take most of the color out of the grass and shift it more towards the skin tones for a little bit more of a duotone look the next step that I did was uh, curves adjustments and I just made a custom one here to I didn't want the whole image affected. I just wanted it different points to be adjusted with most of the mid-tones staying pretty much where they are. This creates a little bit more pop in the image, crisps things up a little bit. And then I did some dodge and burn. Now, I never use the dodge and burn tools that are in the menu here because they're pretty destructive. So the best technique that I've come across was actually using the curves again and just taking the midpoint and dragging that down a little bit. And then all you do is you make a mask and paint it all black. And wherever you paint white is where you want to show up. So if we zoom into the details of this dress and I turn that on and off. You can see a lot more definition pops out in the dress. Did a little bit of work on the arm too. Making the lip look a little bit fuller here. The shadow was a little bit cut off. So that just fills it up nicely. A little bit more shadow and some of the lacing here looks a little bit better. And of course the dodge completely eliminates that shadow that was happening with the tension in the forehead. Really defines the nose and brightens up the lip and this whole face just, just really just comes alive with just a little bit more light. Also capping off the bright area that's hitting the hair here, making it nice and healthy and shiny. A little bit more coming out in here. And of course on the dress, Doing the dodge combined with the burn really gives that a lot of texture as though you could feel it. Now, when we went to do our color balance, we had a little bit of a problem here. It looks like it didn't get everything. So I made a separate uh, grass fix layer where I just painted it in uh, with the same color and set it to color blending. You're not seeing it up here because I merged it with everything that was below it was pretty much done here so I did a high pass filter filter other and high pass and basically what that is used for is to sharpen up the image so if I turn that off and on let's just zoom in a little bit let's say to these flowers here you can probably see it pretty strongly Really sharpens things up. Let's zoom into the face. Much sharper. And I'm going to go to the mask that was used with that to show you which areas were sharpened. Now, what I did was I created the mask just to sharpen along the edges of things because I didn't want the skin really sharp. There was plenty, of, there was enough detail there and I didn't want it to be kind of standing out every slight little imperfections, especially after all the work I did on the frequency separation. But you can see it's applied to the edges of everything, the flowers, the lacing here, everything that needs a little bit of extra sharpness. The eyes are important areas to get sharp. So we'll see how that turned out. And that's much better. 
And by the time I was all done and I kind of stepped away from the image for a little bit, I came back and I just decided to do a final color tweak. It's a very subtle change, but uh, by the time I get to the end, they usually the changes are. So let's close that everything up there and have a look at the before and the after. And once again, if I was to go to back to this stage here, I could probably consider that an alternate version of the image that I was pretty happy with. But to get this really controlled palette that I was going for, I ended up with this. Thanks for checking out Impossible Color. If you have anything to add that you think would be useful to the community, I'd appreciate some comments below. And if you have ideas for new videos that you'd like to see, any common problems you're having with Camera Raw or Photoshop, I'll see what I can do to help you out. See you next time.